Well, welcome to Caffeinated Theology. We are glad to be back after an extended break. Um, we are here uh, wrapping up our season three of Caffeinated Theology, uh, the Holy Spirit. We will talk about a few things um, about the Holy Spirit that we have not yet covered, and then we will wrap up the entire season um, discussing things from previous episodes. We also hit on a few current events, uh, such as the abortion issue. And uh, we are reviewing Black White Roasters Coffee, the Bubblegum Roast. So stay tuned for that. We are joined by our friend Jake Metz as our special guest. And we look forward to discussing uh, the things of the word with him. And welcome to Caffeinated Theology. Discussing theological truths for biblical living. Reviewing featured coffee roast and premium brewing techniques. This is the Caffeinated Theology Podcast, bringing you biblical truths over a fine cup of coffee. All right, welcome to season three. Episode number seven has been some time. We've been away for a few weeks. A lot of things have happened uh, since we had uh, Mr. Danny with us for the uh, episode on the Holy Spirit, um, which I thought was a a very um, informative, well-rounded episode. So if you haven't had a chance to to tune into that, go ahead and, and do that. Catch up. You've had plenty of time to catch up. Uh, on the podcast, and so, um, like I said, we've had quite a few things happen um, through the weeks. Uh, Jason, you've had some uh, camps that uh, yeah, yeah, for we, students. We recorded with Danny, and I believe that was right around Easter, or maybe just after Easter. But uh, after. we had some some family health issues with my parents, and then mm-hmm. it became camp season. So mm-hmm. we've gone to camp with the little kids we've gone to camp with the teenagers and yeah. uh finally got back from that and then we all got sick yeah okay. and then you got sick and now yeah. we're finally on the mend and ready right. to do a little uh caffeinated theology yeah yeah covid yeah. kind of ran its course a little bit um just when we thought we were kind of over it for the most part had a little bit of a not an outbreak but just a few few people get it uh, but praise the lord and everybody's come through that well and and healthy so today we're joined by by jake we're going to let uh you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself um maybe give a little bit of your testimony too we always kind of ask our um our guests kind of how to come to know the lord and um you know just a little bit about yourself yeah um my name is jacob metz i'm 17 years old and um, I've been coming to the church for about a few years now. I've grown up in a very Christian family. Um, my parents were both very Christian, still are. My dad was a youth minister at Piney Grove for a few years, and I've always um, been in the presence of church. Um, but just recently, I have started to like really devote my life to God and just give my heart and mind to the Lord. About mm-hmm. five months ago, I really started to to dig deep into the Scripture right. and just get really curious. And mm-hmm. these um, podcasts have really right. helped me with mm-hmm. driving to school. I drive 30 minutes to school, 30 minutes back, so I have about an hour to kill every day. Yeah. So um, just listen to the podcast. Right. There's other podcasts I listen to. They'll kind of answer my questions, like Cooper stuff. That's always that's been a really good one for me. Um, just really understanding Scripture mm-hmm. and what God's right. will is, and this season the Holy Spirit has been a big eye op- eye opener as mm-hmm. well because I didn't really know what the little voice inside my head was, but now I kind of can mm-hmm. distinguish like the Holy Spirit, you know. And yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so yeah, I, I've seen a lot of growth in Jake over the last year. Uh, I think last summer we were uh, uh, at camp, actually, on the way home, maybe. And when um, when we went through the mountains, 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, you said you like to listen to podcasts. Listen to this podcast. Yep. And uh, he listened. So, I, do you remember what episode? I don't remember what episode yeah. it was. Do you remember? Which one? Yes. I think y'all were in Tennessee. Yeah, that's right. It was, when it was we, a Tennessee episode. Yeah, I listened because we I was driving with Tracy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to the uh, when we went to the one during the convention with yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd was with us. So I remember y'all were talking yeah. about that, and I kind of um, I've always gone to the camps, and the camp is like a getaway. It's a week, just all completely devoted to to Christ. And so, but the hardest part is once you leave camp, yeah. because then all the distractions of the world come back mm-hmm. in like reality, just really. Mm-hmm really hits you so it's every time i go to camp and like i'm like this is how i want to live i want to devote my life to god and then i'll go away from camp and in a few weeks i'll be back to back to just feeling broken and just running away from god and but this these last few months have just been like every day i'm just committed to giving my life and mind to god you know one thing we talk about a lot is discipleship and uh um you know, me and me and Jake spend a lot of time texting and on the phone, just uh, talking about the Lord and, and that kind of stuff. And, and really, you know, uh, in coming to Christ and then growing in your faith, um, that's what it's all about. It's about uh, um, filling your mind, and and through that, the Holy Spirit fills your heart with the truth of God. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think of Scripture, uh, was it, where Peter says, uh, like newborn babies. Crave, mm-hmm. crave pure spiritual milk, and you know you mentioned that whole um, camp thing, and you know I lo- as much as I love camp, there's one thing about it that really frustrates me, and it's the what you mentioned the you go you know, take a group off to camp and everybody's um, kind of uh, gung ho if you will, and you come home and you go back to life, and if you don't uh, actively seek out discipleship, you just you just fall back right back where you are, and that's you know that's not just camp. Um, we've had a conversation earlier this week about some events we've had right here uh, in our community. Uh, people will get, I want to serve the Lord. I got, I got to do better. I want to serve the Lord. Um, and then you see some people follow through, and then sometimes you see some people slip. Yeah. And it's all about uh, um, you know seeking out that discipleship yeah. and, and really being disciplined in uh, in following after and seeking after Christ. There's a couple of ways also to look at it, depending on who you talk to, <laughs> depending on their background. Some people would say, well, if you really and truly have been impacted by the Holy Spirit to pursue him, you're going to do it, you know, and, you know, there won't be any obstacles in your way. Okay, you're going to grow in your faith, you're going to but I also know, on the flip side of that, the reality of the flesh is to pull against the things of the Spirit. I mean, even Jesus addressed that in the Garden um, of Gethsemane, that the flesh is, the Spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. And that really is the story of our life. Yeah. I mean, if that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't need discipleship. And so, there's, although there might be two different ways to look into that, and I can kind of see that. The Lord gets a hold of you in a perfect world, you know, with, with the act of, salva- uh, of salvation and dr- growing close to the Lord, you're going to pursue it no matter what. But we aren't in a perfect world, so we need we need to we need those people in our lives to help us grow. And um, any Sunday morning you come to Piney Grove or any church across America in this modern day, and you look out and you see little pockets of people missing Sunday school people aren't aren't plugged in. It all boils down to the many years of a lack of discipleship and disciple making in a church. So, in a perfect world, we'll pursue the Lord, you know. But we're broken, and we don't live in that perfect world. So, yeah, you know, on that on that uh, line of thought, uh, I grew up with uh, Jake's dad, Jacob, and uh, we came to the Lord close to the same time. Not exactly the same time, but. Um, we also kind of experienced the part of our faith that Jake's talking about right now, really at the same time where we were both mm-hmm. just, you know, we were saved. We had, uh, come to the Lord, you know, you know broken and want, you know, calling on the Lord for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a little, little time after that, um, the Lord started dealing with our heart about getting serious about our faith. Uh, both of us kind of at the same time and we would meet 
once a week um, early and drink coffee. That's actually how I got to drinking coffee. Um, we would go to a little restaurant and just uh, drink coffee and you talk about maybe something that we had read that week or um, sometimes we had big, deep spiritual conversations, but quite often we just had coffee and had prayer with each other and um, just growing together mm-hmm. in our faith and kind of being able to know, uh, you know, I'm meeting with Jacob this week. Uh, he's going to ask me how I've been serving God. I'm going to do the same for him. And right. that's a, that's an important part of discipleship as well, um, having peers that, that are wanting to grow um, with you, but also uh, having people who are further along in the faith that you can go to um, and and ask questions. And, and All right. Well, the coffee today was actually given to us by uh, last episode's guest, Mr. Danny Price. Uh, he brought us a coffee. This is um, from, I think it's Black and White Coffee Company, uh, Black White Roasters, and... Our blend for today, this episode, is Juan Felipe uh, Bubblegum. It's from Colombia. Um, so we're gonna we're actually drinking on it now. We'll give a little review of that towards the end. But stick around. We are going to further our um, topic, our discussion on the Holy Spirit. And we'll actually finish up this season on the Holy Spirit. And we're going to jump right into... Uh, season uh, number four, uh, hopefully in a few weeks. So we won't have a long span unless the Lord return, and then then we won't need caffeinated theology. But anyway, stick around. Um, grab yourself a cup of coffee. All right, so the doctrine of the Holy Spirit is pneumatology. Now, I don't know if we actually use that name. Um, the, the premise... Uh, it goes over my head. The, the premise of caffeinated theology is... Um, is engaging in theology for anyone in the in the church, anyone in the pew. So you don't have to use pneumatology or soteriology or those terms. And that's why we have folks come on who uh, you we might have a professor come on one day. I don't know, but we like to have people on and in the podcast who are members of the church who uh, you know, think biblically, think theologically, although they don't use the terminology and throw it around. Um, you know, all of our guests so far have been, you know, people who had a vocation, doctors, um, fleet maintenance person, you know, like Thomas, or students who listen to the podcast, who enjoy the podcast. And so it's meant to, to kind of help us to think a little bit deeper we don't have to use pneumatology. I still don't even really know stuff. what pneumatology is. Yes, that sounds we get a like definition the, on that. That sounds like the uh, the royal yes. people of Middle Earth. Yeah. Okay, that's Numenor. It's like but. pneumos. Or it's like um, spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really, it's a study on the spirit. But it, in this sense, it's uh, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So, like, like Hebrew is very interesting language too, outside of Greek. So, like the. Um, the word for spirit is ruach. So it's like almost hakanalugi. Ruach. So it's like breath, very breathy. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's where they get the word spirit. So it's breathy or anyway. So that's kind of always ne- kind of neat that a lot everything like in the lang- Hebrew language has like meaning and significance even down to the way they they breathe out. So. Um, but anyway, that that being aside, um, the study of the Holy Spirit. We've already talked a lot uh, over a few things already discussed. Holy Spirit is comforter. Uh, Holy Spirit bringing the Word alive, um, illumining the Word. We have talked about that a little bit. We'll talk about it some today too. Um, as comforter, uh, illumining the Scripture, which we'll of course talk about here and. And um, just a little bit, sanctifier. We talked. Of, we did speak some some about that. How the Holy Spirit sets us sets us apart, All right? But we also, for our guests who are coming on, we encourage if you guys if you have questions, anything that you would like for us to 
um, you know, to discuss. Part of what we do really, I think, is probably ninety percent just open conversation. You know, so any questions you have, you might want us to kind of talk about. Feel free to, because that helps us kind of think together too. Um, okay. Yeah. So Holy Spirit as sanctifier, we talked about as sets us apart. Um, think about it like this: the Bible. In the Bible, uh, use the word saints, holy ones, um, being set apart, holy in the sense of um, being set apart, not like God, but holy in the sense of righteous. So we're holy, small h, whereas God is holy, big h. It's kind of way. Yeah, he, God is the source of holiness. He, he is yeah. holiness. Mm -hmm. And sanctification is kind of... Uh, his holiness Im imparted almost. It's yeah. like uh, enables it, it, it enables mm -hmm. us to reflect his mm -hmm. holiness. Yeah. So we, we get a, a full orbed kind of doctrine of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. I mean, most of the time, if you, you talk to somebody about the Holy Spirit, a lot of times they go right to the book of Acts, you know, and they're thinking about the gift of tongues and what the apostles did in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. But where do we see that in the Old Testament? Do we see any work of the of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but they're not so well defined, but yeah, we absolutely do. Yeah. Well, I th you know, and we've talked about mm -hmm. this throughout the, the season of the Holy Spirit, uh, really is is how God speaks and interacts to mm -hmm. uh to his people. Uh I got a question for you Larry. I, mean, I, I was kind of thinking about this uh the last week or two uh, on kind of in this line of thought. Um I've been reading uh through Isaiah and um through uh some of first or second Kings and second Chronicles um when I think it was Assyria mm -hmm. um, kind of sieged uh, Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, Judah, right. and uh, uh, the word literally says that God moved the mm -hmm. uh, the Assyrian king as judgment. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider that the Holy Spirit speaking? I know we normally say the Holy Spirit speaks to believers, mm -hmm. um, but God moving in yeah. history. Well, if you read, uh, uh, I believe it's in, Jer it's in Jeremiah, where it talks about the armies of the north like a seething pot. I believe that's where it's at. And really, in that sense, it's Babylon. And, and I don't necessarily think it's God calling them, saying, move against my people, as much as it is uh, prospering their, their work, like their training, you know, their... Um, their bows are are tight. Their arrows are sharp. Their sandals are or whatever are you know well fitting. Uh, the Lord has prospered them to train well for the sense of marching. So I think in that sense is is kind of what it. Is. I don't think it's necessarily saying that you know he moved the the kings, um, you know, to move upon his people in the sense of vocally calling them out to war but allowed them to train and prosper in that in that sense um speaking on the holy spirit there's one thing we brought up in youth a few weeks ago right when we got back from camp i believe um and you're saying how we can see the holy spirit move when people like when we have to bring up god it's like any other religion they don't really yes mind but once we say god or bring in jesus then it just yeah, heaven goes crazy. Absolutely. Uh, Hebrews uh, four twelve, I think. So uh, Hebrews four twelve says, "For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart." And you know, we talk about that. I talk about that a lot. Uh, you know, in this culture we live in, and really not just our modern culture. This is been the case uh for hundreds of years if not thousands uh you know 
you can mention spiritual things. People like to talk about spiritual things. Um, you know, we sometimes in the church talk about how uh, the world has just moved so far away from God and so far away from the things of God. But and while that's true, um, mankind has still never and never will move away from the desire to uh, think on spiritual things. And uh, the reason for that is, uh, I think if you read Romans 1, um, you can talk about how we know the truth of God, um, but but mankind suppresses the truth and, and believes a lie. But we know it. Uh, we know that it's there. Uh, we know God. We just naturally know that there's something. And... Uh, uh, because of that, I think that's why people are okay with spiritual stuff. But kind of to get what you what you were saying, um, when you start talking about Jesus in particular, and if you say God and they know you're talking about Yahweh, God of the Bible, Jesus, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all that, um, in particular when you particularly when you say Jesus, people will start to freak out. Then uh, they don't want to hear that. And I think this verse is, is a, a good illustration of why the Word of God is living and active. The Holy Spirit speaks. Anytime the Word is divided, anytime the Word is, as, as we said in the Awana verse for years, is rightly handled, um, that Word the, uh, speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks through it. Uh, mm -hmm. um, he says it uh, um, pierces to the division of soul, spirit, joints, and marrow. In other words, it convicts. It shows us our need for um, a relationship with God. It really, uh, when you boil it down, it shows us that we are lost and undone. And I think when we were talking about it the other day, um, it was in response to um, a guy we all know who had posted uh, on Facebook um, a question of why are so many people against the church? And I saw Larry had, had posted a little response. Um, and I thought about that all day. And ultimately, it's because uh, when you start to think on the truths of God and who God is, uh, you have, first of all, you have to respond because of what it says here in, in Hebrews 4. Um, you have to respond because the word convicts. Well, then when you respond, how do you respond? One of two ways. Um, you either accept it, which is accepting submission to God, um, or you reject it. Um, and what we talked about that particular day in youth is the God of this age is self. And uh, you know, that is that is just what our culture has lifted up is it's all about me. It's all about self. Um, I need to get everything I can get. Uh, who are you to tell me whatever? And uh, we have to when we have have to if if when we have to respond to the scripture, if we respond um, in belief, um, and in, well, then we have to submit to God as Lord and forsake ourselves. And I think sometimes the rejection of that will come out in anger, um, will come out in uh, um, hostility. I think we're seeing that right now with some. Uh, uh, current events um you know we haven't been on the podcast since uh roe v wade was uh somewhat overturned um and i think anybody who's been on social media since then can see um just i don't know it's just like uh people will throw out these scenarios of what if the mom is in danger or I saw one yesterday. It was like, what world are we living in? My baby has been diagnosed uh, that they have zero chance to live. And why do I want them to suffer in the womb? And, you know, just these yeah. crazy scenarios out there. Right. And look, we're not saying uh, that we have no sympathy or we don't need to come alongside those people. Um, but, you know, suffering ha is, is a part of this mm -hmm. life and a part of the world. But you still cannot get around the fact that to abort a baby is to murder a human being. Yeah. Um, but we don't want to give up that self. We want to, and you mentioned this in your sermon a few weeks ago, um, 
when we were in the portion of Deuteronomy that dealt with Molech, um, mm-hmm. of you know we sac- our culture has sacrificed so many um, unborn children on the altar of success, convenience, uh, whatever it may be. But that is our modern day Molech mm-hmm. is abortion, and I mean you think about about. 99.99% of why people have abortions. Um, convenience, uh, mm-hmm. not in my plans, yeah. I can't afford it, uh, whatever. I mean, there's a million different reasons. Some, you know, could seem more valid than others, but ultimately, mm-hmm. no matter what the reason is, it's still a human being being mm-hmm. being murdered. And I guess I got off on that ta- tangent just thinking about the, the God of self Mm-hmm. And I saw somebody post. Being selfish, I saw somebody but. post right after that uh, ruling came down that said uh, it was essentially saying a man can't uh, have an opinion on abortion. It said, you know, when a man has goes and has sex, he doesn't have to worry about his career being ruined, his body being ruined, um, his life being in jeopardy. You know, all the kind of tropes of uh, of how it affects the mother uh, and how it could have, you know, affect their plans. And it just, to me, it's, it was all about those reasons were all about self. Um, but again, like you said, in that sermon, you know, someone who's biblically um, based and attuned to, to the word of God is going to be, um, there will be no better advocate for women's rights. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, a human being is a human being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I would imagine if you mo- if you weigh the motives of most folks, uh, <clears throat> when you get really really right down to it, most people they don't really they're not they're not concerned whether or not the person uh, has a child if they're raped. They're not concerned whether or not you know the child in the in the womb has some type of deficiency. These are all things that people use that are like obscure things that hardly ever, well, they do happen, but um, it's not like the norm, you know. And so they make they make things that are not the normal and put it up here as a way of saying, see, I'm not selfish, I'm not. It's not all about me. And you really dig back those layers. Now, I can't judge anybody's motives, as I don't know at the end of the day, only the Lord can do that. But I would imagine if you, you if you dug down into a lot of the motives, there is little to no concern about those things. Um, they're just more really more concerned about whether or not they're going to be able to do the things that they like to do, and, and without the um, conf, you know the constraints of having a, a child, you know. Yeah. And so a, a good a good. Uh podcast to listen to on this i listened to on the way to camp when we went was uh, cooper stuff um episode 120 um and he has a, a lady on on there who had an abortion when she was um, a teenager and she just kind of after that you know realized what happened uh and the lord just even though through that terrible decision as she in her words mm-hmm. um the lord used it to uh to be for her to be able to use her experience particularly with planned parenthood to expose what really goes on um and um just to talk about how it really does affect women mm-hmm. um the the true effect that abortion has on women um, and it's it's a good episode. Uh, it's it's really good. Yeah, I've listened yeah. to it as well, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. it's really good. I mean, she yeah. knows what she's talking yeah. about. So. so, so the thing would be like right now, once this goes live, you know, once this goes out, um, no doubt there might be people who say, "Well, you three men who have no criteria to talk about <laughs> abortion or, or or any uh, anything like that." And so there are those folks who are really just advocates of, you know, who. Who are you, men, to talk about a, a matter such as this, where, you know, well, the woman is the one carrying around the child for eight nine months, and so. But at the end of the day, it's still completely it's, unbiblical yeah. to 
right. kill yeah. anyone. Oh, yeah, man, that's, that's right, Jake. That You're right. Life? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can argue, there's an argument against that too, but at the end of the day, like Jake said, mm-hmm. it's still a human being right. being killed. I mean, that's, yeah. you can throw out whatever you want to. Okay. You just men, can't get around can't, it. Okay. Men can't talk about it. Fine. Uh, even though, <laughs> you know what? All three of us sitting here at one point were a fetus. Um, yeah. Men can't talk about it. Well, but, you know, uh, and, and I mean, I, I could talk about it, but I, so I can also, if, if that's the route you really want to take, I have probably a million or so women who will, you yeah. know, who I will mean, talk on it. Well, yeah, that's what, and that's what I said. Go to yeah. that that episode. It's <laughs> yeah. 120, episode 120. Uh, the person who uh, he had her on name. her name was or is um, Victoria Robinson. Mm-hmm. It was really it was a really good episode. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. But I, I was listening to that while while I was driving. So that was, so that does bring, fired up. So that does <laughs> yeah. bring up an interesting question since we're talking about the. Avenue of the Holy Spirit, and, and and I did mention this working through Deuteronomy 18, and I mean the, the comparison was Planned Parenthood with Molech. Well, Molech, Molech didn't have 65 million unborn children under his belt, as to where Planned Parenthood did, but or does. But what is the uh, work of the Holy Spirit in a in a person's life, a woman a woman's life, dealing with? Um, you know, abortion, those type of things. Because there are some quote-unquote Christians who don't see anything wrong with abortion and are even advocates of it. Okay, would we say that them people are unregenerate? I mean, would we go that far? I mean, I did in the sermon... And it's based on the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, the Spirit, the Spirit will will bring a believer uh, at some point mm-hmm. to right understanding. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if I would ever go as far as to say an individual is lost because the Spirit may still be working in that individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you don't know uh, how far they have. Yeah, but gone uh, down that road. Um, Oh yeah, that's tough. I mean, that's tough to kind of think about and say, but uh, I don't know. Well, well, the easiest way to answer that is um, we're not. We're ultimately not the judge, and like I said, we don't know where they are in their walk, but we do know they are either one or two things, or even three. They're either they are either unregenerate. They're, or they're immature in their faith, or the third one would be they're indifferent, which could be either one of the first two. So um, we at least know they fall somewhere in there. But the thing also to remember too is we don't want to try to we don't want to sound insensitive either um, to women who in the past have had abortions and are reminded of it almost daily, if not daily throughout their whole life and and that would be a case where i would say that that men would be severely at a severe deficit of knowing how to minister to women now if there is a deficit in in men's men being able to speak to or minister it would be on that the after effect of abortion i i don't personally i really don't know how you know not that i don't know how but you take the bible scripture and you can work through through things but i would have a difficult time if a lady come in my office and said i had an abortion 15 years ago and i think about it every day i don't know what to do how do i as a man how do i minister you know how how do i address her issues there ain't but one way, and we've talked about it all season. Yeah, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. That's it. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and and you know, there are uh, ministries out there uh, that deal with specifically with that and point you know, pointing people to 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 those things, um, not to pass responsibility, mm-hmm. but like you said, there's some things that we can deal with through the Holy Spirit as best as we can, but 
the responsible mm-hmm. thing to do would be to to help get get somebody like that with, with yeah. someone who is equipped to mm-hmm. to be able to help yeah. that person go through it. Yeah, we we are kind of like that as we know how to jump on things, you know, as prohibitions. You know, we jump. I mean, we are ravenous when it comes to jumping on the topic of homosexuality, the LBGT community, you know, the alphabet, the maf- mafia. Is that fair? <laughs> the alphabet people. The alphabet mafia. We we jump on that, you know, and that's kind of low-hanging fruit for for evangelicals. We do the same thing with abortion, you know. But how do we speak to those issues with um, with a sense of, you know, um, authority in, in the Word, and yet at the same time be gentle, I guess, and not overbearing? Or is there a place for being overbearing? I don't know. And again, it goes back as we... You know, being sensitive to the work of the of the Holy Spirit, so it all it all comes full circle, I think. So, so Jake, in in a teenage setting, um, have you found yourself maybe having to stand up for some some stuff you know is right or wrong? And yeah, uh, how do you how do you try to deal with that in a loving way? Um, I mean, a lot of it is just I'll I'll pray about just pray about it because ultimately God just gives me the comforting and the ability to say the right words at the the right time to touch mm-hmm. people's hearts. Yeah. But um, there are definitely times where people will say there's nothing wrong with being homosexual and then like being a Christian or having an abortion, having three abortions, like that's perfectly fine because like what if the woman's in risk and – you just kind of have to a, bring it back to scripture every time. Yeah. That's a that's a whole, yeah. You know, that's a whole different yeah. set of scenarios yeah. And, yeah. and 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 ethics at that point. But yeah, so yeah, I know it's like uh, I've I've heard a lot of you guys you know talk about uh, well, so and so always talks about. Uh, I'm a Christian, but or they go to church and say they're a Christian, yeah. but they live this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, how do you deal with with that if they li- confront you and talk to talk to you about it? And I think you're right. It's through prayer, um, through the Holy Spirit, uh, and to mm-hmm. kind of to answer Larry's question, how do you uh, do that with love and uh, with compassion, but at the same time? not compromising the word and mm-hmm. maybe sometimes there is or well, there is i mean there is a time to just say uh, i don't know about yeah. with hostility but just to you got to be yeah. firm on on mm-hmm. what scripture says yeah. and i just willing to defend the word yeah. Yeah. i find myself having a more difficult time not with people who are uh, unbelievers that advocate you know Abortion or those type things. It's the people who claim Christ that that you know, and then also are advocates of abortion or something like that. That I have a diff. That is probably a big struggle for me not to be hostile. Yeah, and what it's what Jake just said. Mm-hmm. He said you go to the scripture. Yeah, and uh, for people who will will say like in this question that I've had a lot of students ask, you know, so and so. They they say they're Christians and they go to church, but they uh, actually don't reflect. They they, they you know mm-hmm. they live in this gay homosexual lifestyle or whatever it may be. Um, you know mm-hmm. the the best way to deal with that, and I think it can be done lovingly, is if that person is actually talking to you about it. What does Scripture say? Uh, you say you believe this, but is that the Jesus mm-hmm. of the Bible? What does the Bible say? And you know, they if they disagree with it at that point, they're disagreeing with the word. It's not our opinion. Um, and we can, you know, I think I've told the story about when me and Jimmy and Colby went to the mm-hmm. uh, the uh, I forget what it's called equal, equal the Universalist, Universalist yeah. Church, and it became it really was more of a 
uh, let's meet up on the Bible meeting. Um, but something that, and it was absolutely from the Holy Spirit because I had not uh, even thought this thought before until that moment. But, but just telling them, you know, if I truly believe in my heart that someone who dies apart from knowing the Jesus of the Bible is headed to hell for eternity, mm-hmm. what is more loving for me to leave you alone and say, you know, live how you want to live? Believe you're right with God, even though it's obviously not the God of the Bible, or for me to try to share what I believe is the truth that will save you from that eternal separation and torment from, you know, mm-hmm. apart from Jesus. And yeah, I, when I said that to those folks, you could see a couple of people had never thought of it that way. And, you know, maybe just trying to keep that mindset and talking with folks when we have the opportunity. So that brings me to another question. People, ultimately, when you start talking about homosexuality, sometimes on abortion, but mostly on homosexuality, they'll say, well, do you, don't you have people in your church uh, who aren't married, living together, mm-hmm. um, or who are uh, mm-hmm. sleeping around with different people? Yeah. Um, so how do you deal with that? Same way you do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the same way you deal with it. It's no different. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know. And we've kind of boxed ourselves in as a, as a church, that that is kind of our fault too, because we have, like I said, we become ravenous to the homosexual lifestyle when we've kind of given a pass, so to speak, on people living together, and uh, we don't we don't address those two things together. So if one good key. Um, way that I found helpful of speaking about uh, the homosexual lifestyle as being in sin is you talk about, you know, the wife or husband who's running running around on their spouse, just as you would, you know. Yeah, put it right there together. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But we've kind of we've kind of put ourselves in that box because we have taken that as our own kind of personal pet sin to attack and have let everything else go in a way because it nobody's really talking about so and so who's shacked up with so and so or doing whatever only in gossip but you know if there's somebody in the church who claims to be gay or whatever you know that becomes the talk of the church I guess and we kind of yeah and I know I mean it's I agree I agree with that and I know we have tried to to deal with with the uh, I guess the heterosexual side of sexual sin as well as far as church membership and church leadership and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we have tried to deal with it, but we we've also fallen short at times. But um, I think one of the big things that kind of separates the two, if you will, um, well maybe not, but. Uh, Someone who would say, I'm a homosexual, that's who I am. I know that it, the Bible says that it's wrong, but it's who I am, yeah. and it's what I'm going to do. That just is blatantly mm-hmm. um, yeah, anti-gospel yeah. as far as repentance mm-hmm. and turning away from self and turning to God. Right. It would be equal to say, <laughs> okay, you know what? Yeah, I know the Bible says I don't need to be... Uh, sleeping with my girlfriend or boyfriend and living together until we're married. But that's just where we are and what we do. I'd say that's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a big difference in now. Somebody would, if they would say, I struggle with homosexuality. That's yeah. a temptation and a sin that I deal with, and I'm tr- I'm turning from it. Uh, mm-hmm. I still struggle with it, but I'm tr- to, yes, I would no, say yeah. to that person, okay, at least they're showing some kind of mm-hmm. evidence of repentance. But I don't know. That's, that's, that's yeah. a a tough issue yeah. to, to talk about and to try to deal with. That's just how we are as far as people. We take one or the other extreme. And it's difficult sometimes for us to balance balance those out in, in ministry. And I may have – I don't think I've shared this on the podcast before, but I, I think I, I'm going to share this. Um, I currently – going back to school, so going back to Southeastern Seminary. And um, 
I w- one thing that I remember from school outside of my studies is there was a group of um, LBGT, you know, a group that came to Southeastern, and they wanted to meet with some professors, you know, kind of have a meeting with them, kind of try to, I don't know about negotiate or just try to work on some things together. I, I don't know exactly what they were what their intent was, but well, professors are busy. They're teaching classes. They're, you know, they're preparing, you know, lectures, that, those type of things. And so they can't just drop everything and meet. Well, you know, the group, they had a bus. They came in on a bus, and they stood out in front of the main part of the school, which has the old Wake Forest College, uh, Wake Forest University sign uh, out front, the big pillar, you know, sign. And so they would, uh, they protested out in front of that. And some of the students from Southeastern went out there and served them lunch and hot dogs and talked, you know, shared the gospel with them. And if I was going to say there's any representation of how, how to minister or how to, um, you know, engage, that's probably a good picture. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not agreeing with it because they're sharing the gospel with them and they're not agreeing with the lifestyle, but they're not, um, they're not being hostile to them either. They're showing them love. They're made in the image and likeness of God. And so they have dignity there. And I think that was a really good example that's kind of burning to my, my, um, you know, my brain. And, you know, I think that kind of may, brings me to thinking about uh, maybe where all this comes from. And what you just said there. <clears throat> I, I go back to thinking of, you know, as believers, we don't expect or we shouldn't expect people who don't don't believe in Christ to act like people mm-hmm. who believe in Christ. Right. But where most of the friction comes and what we've been talking about is in the church. Mm-hmm. And that is a big difference. Yeah. Um, and people take it, a lot of times will take it as, so you're saying gay people aren't welcome here. Or you're saying so and so is not welcome here. No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying to be a part of the body mm-hmm. of Christ here, the membership here, mm-hmm. who is serving Christ and uh, really on the mission of this church or of a church. Uh, the number one, uh, the number one, really the only requirement is that is that is a regenerate person, and then you would add mm-hmm. to that who is growing in their faith, a a regenerate person. So that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. We're not saying, no, the the gospel's not for gay people, or no, the Mm -hmm. gospel's not for so-and-so. We're saying to serve in a local body as a member, you you need to be saved. And You show fruits of regeneration, and that lifestyle is is, is not not fruit of regeneration. So I think a lot of times it gets uh, misconstrued as not being welcoming. Or yeah. loving, and it's not that. Mm-hmm. And it, look, I'll be the first to admit, over over the years, the church uh, many times has been unwelcoming and mm-hmm. uh, th- maybe maybe thrown out some some mm-hmm. uh, hate, if you oh, will. Oh yeah, yeah. But and that's uh, that's yeah. not, <clears throat> that's not only with with uh, you know gay, lesbian, you know um, LBGT, whatever, but that's also with with race race issues you know being you know in a in a church in the south you know so you kind of get a little bit of both of that you know you, you see kind of a little bit of both of that in in the church but anyway yeah so like if a um person who was and, and there's big issue right now with um first baptist orlando who are you know they have um lbgt Community people serving in church. I, a, speaking of that, have you heard of what's going on with the Christian music industry and that? I have not. No. Um, I just come across a few videos. I may edit this part out because I don't know anything about it. But mm-hmm. I come across a few videos yesterday. Um, the only one I knew about was Toby Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, his new album has a DC Talk reunion on it. Um, for one song, and I remember my my buddy Joseph sent me a a link saying, "Look, look, look at this," because we're big DC Talk fans. And I was just like, you know what? 
it kind of disappoints me because uh, Kevin Max, the one of the singers, uh, you know, about a year ago, um, come out and said that he was an ex evangelical. He was no longer uh, believed in the God of the Bible. Uh, he believed in the, uh, a universal God of the universe. Um, he's very mm. LGBT, whatever. He's um, kind of. Uh, you progressive, know, all, all very progressive, very mm-hmm. um, anti, you know, it's f- biblical. And yeah. I was just like, and I always thought that Toby was just really solid. Mm-hmm. And I had, and a lot of people, and I, me included, had thought, you know, uh, one of the reasons DC Talk ended was because everybody always kind of had their suspicions about Kevin because he was just a little bit, uh, mm-hmm. I hate to say weird, but he just kind of. When he would talk in concerts and stuff like that, it sometimes just sounded off. Yeah. And people had their suspicions, and it was just kind of widely accepted. That was the reason DC Talk mm-hmm. kind of quit doing what they were doing. And because Kevin, you know, his, or not Kevin, um, um, Toby had always been very committed to the mission of, of you know, sharing the gospel and the music. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it just really disappointed me. But then I saw this video about it yesterday, and apparently there's um, a, several kind of mainstream Christian groups that are really embracing um, the homosexual agenda. Mm. Um, like, well, maybe maybe uh, Leonier Ministry and and Presbyterian is on something. But going back to the, yeah. the songs, of I mean, it was hundred nineteen hundreds. Like I, I don't want to throw out names and be like because I haven't looked into it, but one of them that came up was Amy Grant. Oh yeah, um, she's gone on tour with Michael W. Smith. That was another name. Um, there's a band uh, that is going touring with Reliant K, who is a Christian band from the '90s. That their whole thing is L- is being LGB. Oh yeah. Uh, so it's something I'm gonna look into. I want to know more about. But I was just kind of disappointed. I've had a little bit of issue with Christian music over the last yeah. ten years. Anyway, I've as long, been yeah. weak. But as long as theocracy don't go that way, I'm okay. <laughs> if they go that yes. way, I'll be like, yeah. oh my gosh. When I was when I was <laughs> reading through some of the comments, and people were like, "There's no good bands out there that have deep." Yeah, I was like, nobody's heard of uh, theocracy, obviously. But uh, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. just Christian music's it's been wishy washy. Yeah, it's been yeah. wishy washy for a long time. Um, but that's why I don't really even listen to modern Christian music. Like my playlist is just 2010s Christian music. Yeah. Like yeah. Mm. it's just well, concerning that that's the route that they're taking. You know. So we come to the conclusion of episode number seven. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of wrap things up and uh, maybe some highlights. Jake, you've listened to most all the episodes. Yeah. What might be some highlights, let's say, from season three that kind of sticks out to you? I know you mentioned some of them at the beginning, but what might be maybe, I don't know, a favorite episode or something that comes to mind working through um, season three? Um, There's definitely a lot of good guests this season. Mm -hmm. Um, With Danny, did you have Dr. Manning this season as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, a lot of it just – answered mm-hmm. questions that I had um, y'all talked about like biblical sayings <laughs> yeah. oh yeah so that was <laughs> yeah. that was good mm-hmm. I like that um, mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that you mm-hmm. hear in movies y'all kind of discussed or heard other or hear other people say celebrities right that y'all kind of were like mm-hmm. true or false kind of so yeah. that helped yeah. um, I feel like that was uh, yeah a pretty good highlight. Um, a lot of just definitions that I didn't know. The Holy Spirit, I've really been able to get a good definitive answer for what the Holy Spirit is and like a well-rounded right. answer around it. Yeah, so one of the first questions that uh, we talked about was uh, the, you know, the Holy Spirit. Uh, is the Holy Spirit an it? Or a he, mm-hmm. and um, this this whole season has kind of been uh, kind of throwing out there or, or fleshing out the the truth that the Holy Spirit is God who leads us, 
and uh, we ne- we neglect that a lot, uh, particularly in the Baptist Church. We we can neglect mm. that. Um, I think that was one of the big things we talked about a lot this uh, mm. this season is mm-hmm. not letting false teachings on the Holy Spirit that are kind of radical and um, that a lot of people know about keep us from thinking on and and really talking about who the Holy Spirit is. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we will tend to just neglect uh, the Spirit because we don't want to be associated with, uh, you know, being a church that turns cartwheels and swings from mm-hmm. the chandeliers yeah. under the leading, quote-unquote, of the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. because that's what people a lot of times think about. But mm-hmm. uh, the, the Spirit is... is essential to Christian growth and to serving God. So, and, and one thing I know Jake has, I've heard him talk about with me before is just as far as kind of a, a, uh, a big uh, cornerstone of caffeinated theology is when we start talking about something like that, what do we always say? Well, what, what does scripture say? What does scripture say? That's right. And, um, because that's and, something you really can always lean back on. Well, and like you said, uh, we mentioned what some things celebrities have said, some you know, some false teachings maybe, and there's so many ideas out there about God. Yes, that uh, you can mm-hmm. you can say God is whoever you want him to be, and you can go out and find somebody who will back that up with some writing, um, and. Uh, there's only one writing that is from God himself and that's the word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's been a, you know, just a highlight of caffeinated theology from the beginning, but um, it's been encouraging to me to just have discussions with Jake about, about that and hear him say, well, what does scripture say? And, uh, and, and, you know, that to me, that's one of the big takes from this season is just, Throwing up mm-hmm. uh, misconceptions of the Holy Spirit and putting right. them, put them up against what Scripture says. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm a teenager, teenager, and we talk about a lot in youth that nowadays, more than ever, there's just so many things being thrown at us that we kind of have to distinguish if that's like true or false. And a lot of it's false because most people don't want to talk about God and the, mm-hmm. the truth. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, how can, how can the the age old how can a loving God send send someone to hell? Well, hmm. you know, you go to Scripture. What sends you to hell? Uh, hmm. Sin. Sin separates you from God. Yes, hmm. you experience God's wrath and judgment because, and this is something we talk about a lot in youth, is uh, God is holy and just. Uh, it would, it would, he would cease to be either of those if he just let sin go. But God also is loving, um, yes. and a loving God makes a way, made a way for man mm-hmm. to be reconciled to Him. We, in our own sinfulness, condemn ourselves to hell, mm-hmm. and a loving God through Christ, through He Himself coming and dying, you know, paying the penalty we never could. Uh, but you know, you only get there through Scripture. Mm-hmm. When somebody Amen. first asks that question, how can a loving God send someone to hell? If you haven't been in Scripture and you don't understand mm-hmm. the gospel, you can't answer that question. Yeah, that question is just a product of a hostile society um, to God. And and people will latch on to things to use as a defeater against Christianity. Um, one of those is that why would a loving god send somebody to hell or why do bad things happen to good people you know those, those type of things i hear quite a bit and they'll grab on to them and and use them as their defeaters for christianity uh, but a real seeker of truth uh, let's say for instance a, a person is agnostic and they're like a seeker of truth they claim to be you won't just latch on to one little thing and just gravitate up to the, uh, you will search, you will get all the information that you can about 
the question of why do, would a loving God send somebody to hell? And you would search the primary source, which is the Bible. You would a lot of times people kind of stop short, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm mean, like, well, are you really a truth seeker? Are you really tr- seeking to find the truth, or is it you stop somewhere once you got the the answer that you want? You know, you're satisfied with it. Yeah, it really does come down to a point of um, lifestyle versus intellect. You know, a person wants to justify a lifestyle, they don't really care about whether or not Christianity is a is um, reasonable, you know, or has a bit of intellect to it. So, anyway, it's been a good season. Season three, um, we will jump back in, hopefully in a few weeks, on the topic of salvation. Now, for those who might be tuning in, who might be more um, in tune or more, wanting the theological terms, that is soteriology, just the salvation, study of salvation and how we are, how we are born again, and that, and and what what transpires through that. Um, but spoiler alert, yeah, it's not anything we do. No, that's right. Um, so we've been sipping on the bubble gum, Juan Felipe from Colombia, from Black Black White Roasters, and I gotta admit, I made a little strong. Uh, and the bubble gum tones certainly do um, resonate in the in the. <laughs> in the cup, but uh, again, thanks to Danny Price for for the donation. Um, and let's see, let's let's read some of the descriptors here: grapefruit, tropical, strawberry, milk chocolate. Do y'all taste any of that? I could taste some fruit. Yeah, very fruity. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't know about the bubble gum though. Yeah, I didn't. Even yeah, get a bubble, bubble gum might be a stretch. Yeah, I didn't get a bubble gum flavor. It was, it was just more of a. You know, a lot of Ethiopian coffee has that blueberry tone to it, but this one was more uh, – the that fruity tone was out front yeah. for sure. It was kind of raspberry-ish yeah. kind of for me. But um, I had a cup of this uh, night before, and it was I didn't make it as strong. And that night I probably would have given this right around the three and a half, four. Um, being I made it strong, that particular cup, I would probably give it more than a three and a half rating this time. Um, what What do you guys think? Um, I'm I'm not a very um, coffee enthusiast <laughs> like y'all. <laughs> I could not taste a lick of raspberry or eh, okay. fruit in it. It just tasted like strong coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Strong coffee. Um, You'll get there. A usual coffee for me looks like a Starbucks K cup, which is kind of sick. Yeah, yeah. I, t- I almost I, I told Jake I don't know if he's allowed to be on the podcast if he yeah. K-cups, this might be my last but, one. But um, you know how <laughs> you know how um, kind of a disclaimer here. Anyone who drinks K cups, we're not out to get you. But you know how old that coffee is in them K cups. I do. It's yeah. pretty old, but um, I'm well, willing to take that. In full disclosure, so. <laughs> we've talked about it before. I drink, I drink them about one K cup every six weeks when I'm in a hurry. So mm-hmm. I'm just joking. But but um, my normal cup of coffee looks like a Starbucks K cup. Your normal, and then um, with some some creamer. I never drink coffee black. So this has kind of been a mm-hmm. eye opener, and it's probably the last. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, used, uh, I started drinking black coffee all the way back when me and your dad used to meet. That's really? where I started drinking black coffee. Does he still drink black coffee? Yeah, yeah. occasionally. Yeah. But um, still like to sweeten it up a little bit. Yeah. I'd probably give it a. I didn't. I didn't like it all that much. Well, give it a maybe a. So I go ahead. A, I mean, it's not like so bad where I would never take another well, sip of well, it. Well, for one thing, this, this is. kind of coffee is um, I would consider this more of a boutique kind of coffee. Uh-huh. And so you don't really drink 
this coffee with cream and sugar and all that. Yeah. It's it's made to drink black and to pick out on the tunes that are in it. So Jake, here's our scale. A zero is just pure junk. Yeah. All right. A one is like dollar store quality. Two is Walmart quality. Three is like better than Walmart. Like Walmart quality would be like your Folgers, your, your, Folgers, yeah. your, your Maxwell House. Three would be a little bit above that. Four would be like you're getting into the top. And then five is like nothing better. So at five, it's <laughs> like a flavorful. Five is just, like the coffee that they would they would drink on the streets of gold. Yeah, because there's <laughs> nothing better. Nothing better. Really? It's the coffee that they're going to serve when we get when we get to heaven. So this is my own opinion. And yeah, we just, want your opinion. You're not hurting anybody's feelings. <laughs> but I feel like it's a little disgraceful to you guys to <laughs> no. call it a Walmart. That'd be fine. Tier of coffee. It's just not my my cup of cup of tea. Cup, cup of, of coffee. coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's not my cup of coffee. So I'd. You like your give it a, I'd give it a 2.4. Okay. That's good. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm only going to give it a 3. So Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's and and my 3 right. may be based off of the uh mm-hmm. motor oil version that Larry Yeah, I made it really on. strong. <laughs> yeah. I made it really strong. Like I said the other night it was really it was it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, well, maybe I have to try it again, but um Blackwhiteroasters.com. That's the website if anybody wants to check that out. Yeah, and I will say just looking at the bean, uh, it looks like it's you know, roasted. It looks like a quality ro- bean. Roasted yeah. in mm-hmm. a quality way. Yeah, so. there's no um, – I mean, there's no it's oil not, on it, so it ain't dipped in like any bean, yeah. preservatives or anything, and it's not does it's not dipped in any flavor. Um, that's definitely a, a light, yeah. light roast. Yeah, I give it a three. Uh, I thought it was good, just strong, just a little too strong. So I, I may come back and uh, have another cup in the Aero Press yep. with my normal two and a half scoops. So uh, let's see how it is then. Right. Two and a half is probably better than six. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, season number four coming up in a few weeks on Salvation. And hopefully in that season we'll get around to doing our little fishing trip um, doing a podcast from the a boat or a mm-hmm. pontoon or something like that. Um, we just got to figure out how to how to do it without having a bunch of cameras and cords and equipment everywhere. So yeah, yeah. But we're All gonna right. make it happen someday. Yeah, it'd be cool to do. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, hope to see you again soon. <laughs> Episode one, season four coming up. Until then. Have a good cup of coffee. Thank you for joining us, and we hope today's discussion has encouraged and challenged you. Please join us again next week as we discuss biblical truths over a fine cup of coffee.